If the players have an airship and the villain is a dragon, then you are legally obligated to run an airship versus dragon chase scene. I know it seems unfair, but I don't make the rules, hey? I'm just a dungeon master. That is the exact situation in Storm King's Sunder. So let's seize that opportunity. I think this is a worthwhile scene to run, this airship versus dragon chase scene, because one, the villain of our story in Storm King's Sunder is this dragon. So if the dragon captures the airship, then suddenly we have a great scene to role play between the villain and the players and build genuine animosity on an eye level. But secondly, this is just going to be a really rad memory that you're going to share with your friends for years. And that's what I'm all about. Let's make cool memories with our friends through D&D. Let's get started. This chase scene is a modified skill challenge, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a game of rollies. Let's see who can roll higher between the airship and the dragon three times. Whoever gets three successes wins. There's about five steps you do this every round of the skill challenge. The first is the players describe where they are on the airship and they can move between rounds. Next, you describe some kind of hazard or obstacle that's going to be in the player's way. Then the players choose a skill to overcome that hazard. Then the dragon and the airship both roll that skill. Whoever gets higher wins. And then lastly, let's pick a red card for this. Lastly, the dragon does something. The dragon gets <laughs> diabolical and does a legendary action. So you just follow this process every round. So if this is a race to see who can get to three successes first, you're gonna need to keep track. This can be the dragon, this can be the airship, and you can get three successes for each of them. So make sure that your scoreboard is on the table and visible to the players. I wrote in my script that I meant to be folding a paper airplane as I say this bit, but I don't, <laughs> well, how do I hold it and do this? I'm gonna put it up here. Here's the issue. This is meant to be a skill challenge. Now, which skills on your character sheet apply to flying an airship? Because I think if you look on your character sheet, what you're gonna find is a big list of things that are all about adventure, right? Nothing there has anything to do with the very technical and specialized task of flying an airship. So given that the character sheet skills are inadequate, I think that makes you the HR department of this airship, and you essentially get to decide which specialized skills are relevant to operating this airship. And these are brand new original skills that we're gonna come up with. Woo! It actually did pretty good, it did pretty good. So we need to design some airship skills, okay? Here's the anatomy of a skill. We'll make a card for each. You're gonna need a name for the station that the person is working at. If we're working in the furnace, if we're working in the storeroom, right? What is the area of the ship we are in? Then you need a name for the skill and it needs to be something technical, something that you don't find on the character sheet. And then we need three boxes because these are how many slots for characters we have at that location. There's going to be an NPC that works there and then two slots for players if they want to help out. The reason that we have three slots for characters here is because this is how we'll determine advantage and disadvantage. If there's just the NPC there whose job it is to work that station, they're just going to roll with disadvantage. But if a player helps them out, then we can roll normally. And if two players help them out, then we roll with advantage. Wow. So when I take a look at the airship in Storm King Sunder, I see we have six different keyed locations on the map. And when I look at a character sheet, I see that we have six different ability scores, right? Strength, constitution, all that jazz. So let's say we have six specialist skills on this airship. And each of those specialist skills is tethered to a different ability score. Our strength skill is called logistics and it happens at the storeroom. The NPC in the storeroom is Mr. Strong. He's a halfling dragon cultist. Now you would roll logistics whenever you want to move supplies from one area to the other. That could be jettisoning stuff. That could be battening down the hatches. That could be running more harpoons up to the harpoon gun. 
Anything to do with stores or supplies is logistics. Our dexterity specialist skill is called ballistics, and it happens at the turrets, which is the harpoon and the blister. Madeline the tiefling runs the ballistics department. She rolls with a plus two, which is her dex score. You'd roll ballistics whenever you want to shoot anything. So if there's a harpy distracting us, just blast her out of the sky with an old harpoon gun. Or maybe there's a floating island and we want to launch a harpoon into it to kind of like slingshot ourselves around it. That would be ballistics. A constitution specialist skill is called engineering and it happens at the furnace. Now the engineer on this ship is a fire elemental named Calcifo, who is bound by trickery and an unfair pact to serve aboard whatever this airship is called. Engineering is the kind of skill you would roll whenever you want to do an afterburner technique or burn more fuel, or since this is an air balloon airship, it would involve going up and down as well, anything verticality. And before people get confused and angry about me assigning engineering to constitution, I went to the engineering campus, the creative writing campus and the engineering campus at my uni, they were combined. And I saw what you engineers did down at the guild bar. I know (laughs) that engineers have high constitution because I've seen you drink. Our intelligence specialist skill is piloting, which happens in the propeller room by a series of very complicated levers. The NPC in there is named Pilot. (laughs) and he's an awakened suit of armor with his bottom half melted into the ship. He gets a plus two on anything to do with steering the ship up, down, left, right, barrel rolls, punch it. He's got all the buttons. I've got to, I've got to move my stuff. I'm running out of room. I'm running out of room. A wisdom specialist skill is called spotting. Spotting happens in the crow's nest, right up the tippy top, high above the balloon itself. And the NPC that helps out with spotting is an air elemental named Cornicus, bound by magical charms in the balloon. Spotting's all about just seeing danger. It's the land ho position. You can help out with the rigging up there and make adjustments. And it's also for anything to do with the balloon itself, because the spotter is the person that would do that. And our charisma specialist skill is called leadership. This is where Delsephine comes in. She sits on the top deck and she barks orders. That's what leaders do. So leadership is for anything to do with just controlling the crew, addressing the crew, anything to do with morale. Baby, that's leadership. So each of these six skills are based off different attributes, strength, dex, con, int, wisdom, charisma. We're saying the crew gets a plus two For all of these, if the players want to roll instead of the crew, then they can use their strength, their decks, their con. But they will be competing against the dragon school. The dragon has a plus nine strength, a plus zero dex, has a plus eight constitution, has a plus four intelligence, has a plus three wisdom, and a plus five charisma. This is an ancient Blue dragon, baby. So now we need some hazards and obstacles to throw in the path of this chase. And if we're running first to three successes, that means there's gonna be a maximum of five obstacles the players are gonna encounter. So that means you could get away with just a D6 table, but I feel good about a D10. But here is the golden rule for any challenge that you come up with for your chase scene. It can't just be something that affects the airship. We can't just have the mast falls over because then how is the dragon going to roll a comparable challenge to the mast falling over? It doesn't have a mast, but it could be you've entered a vicious wind tunnel that threatens to snap the mast because then the airship can roll for that and the dragon can roll for that. And we have an equal kind of challenge. Okay, so I'm gonna share my list with you, but it's not very good. (laughs) Don't make too much fun of me. If you want a better list, look in the comments section. Somebody will have made something good. But here's what I've got. We're getting too high. The air's quite thin now. Lightning? Ah, Clouds. Hot volcano, hot potato. That's for Sam. Oh no, a swarm of endangered birds. Harpy karaoke? Hey, let's maneuver through the ravine. There's no real joke with this one. It's just kind of a little bit dangerous. Whoa, a floating castle. It's a hill giant rock throwing surface to air missile. The crew are not enjoying themselves. 
Those are my challenges. Those are my 10 challenges. You sh- <laughs> They're fine. So this is exactly how I'd set up the challenge at my table, right? Each of these yellow blocks, these are the NPCs in their location. And you go, players, please place yourself on the map at a different station. They can team up if they want. You know, two of the same, it's fine. But at the end of every round, after we've done our roll and somebody's got a win, you know, maybe the dragon won that one. Regardless of who got that win, the dragon does something diabolical. There's a list of legendary actions that the dragon's going to do, and it will do these in order. At the end of the first round, you roll a d6 to determine which station we're doing. So that's one, the storeroom. You are affected by the dragon's frightful presence. Any NPC in that location is unable to participate in the next round. And any players in that location have to make a saving throw, otherwise they're unable to move to a new station in the next round. After the second round, you roll another d6. That's four, the propeller room. This is the wing attack. The NPC in that location is automatically battered about and knocked unconscious. They are unable to participate in the rest of the chase. Any players in that location need to make a DC 23 dex save or they take 16 bludgeoning damage and they are knocked prone so they can't move to a new station in the next round. Now these are still mild effects, these are fine, these aren't too scary but after the third round we roll again and we land on the turrets. This is where we launch a scale. This is 100% inspired by Final Fantasy X, where the big baddie, a kaiju-like creature called Sin, launches one of its scales and they become kind of animated little gremlins that attack things. In Storm King Sunder, this dragon is known as the Dragon of Statues, and I like the idea of her being able to launch a scale that turns into a gargoyle. That's what happens. This scale comes flying in, lands there. If there is no players there, then that gargoyle kills this NPC. Just gone. And then the gargoyle flies away. That NPC is now gone. They're dead. However, if there is a player at that location, then instead of just outright killing the NPC, the gargoyle attacks the player character. Now, I want you to pause the rest of this challenge and just between that player and this gargoyle, just go back and forth and do the quickest theater of the mind combat that you can. It should take less than five minutes. It should go over just three rounds with a level eight character, but this is a good opportunity just to kind of foreshadow, right? That this is the dragon of statues and we're gonna be encountering a lot of gargoyles later at her domain. And then you get the big boy. At the end of round four, oh no, we've targeted the storeroom again. Poor little halfling. (laughs) We're going to hit him with the breath weapon. This is a straight up special beam cannon of concentrated lightning that just obliterates everything in that station. Any NPCs in the targeted station are destroyed. He's dead. The station itself becomes inoperable. It can no longer be used in the rest of the skill challenge, and it's now damaged to a point where it probably needs to be repaired for the airship to continue to be operational. Any players in that location need to make a DC 23 dexterity saving throw. Otherwise, they take 88 points of lightning damage or half as much on a successful save. Now, if they are somewhere where they're they're below deck, then you could use cover rules here, where for three thirds cover, they could get plus five to their deck save, or for half cover, I think they maybe get plus two. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if people want me to make like a fancy print out like a map for this kind of thing. I can, I don't know, let me know if you want. Whoop. I've done a few trial runs of this system and I've worked out that the dragon is pretty likely to win. That's okay, I don't need this to be a balanced encounter. I need this to be a dragon encounter and dragons are not balanced, that's fine. But that does mean that you as the dungeon master need to prepare for the dragon to win. And when the dragon captures this airship and gets to speak to the players, what does she want? What happens? How are you going to run this scene? In my case, I know that my players are heading towards Iron Slag, the fire giant stronghold. And they're going to go there to try and get this conch shell to teleport to the storm giants. Storm King Thunder, baby. This is just what what we do. So the dragon shows up to give the players a bomb. The bomb is to detonate the adamantine forge in the fire giant stronghold because the giants are building a dragon slaying robot. 
and the dragon doesn't want that to happen. So that's my dragon's motivation. And if you want some help role-playing this scene, you can see the pinned comment down below. And don't forget to check out the newsletter, start-a-quest.com. You get a bunch of freebies and you get a newsletter every two weeks. It's super cool. Check it out.